Hey guys, how you doing? Today we're going to begin with a new series of videos to help you with your practicals and vivas. Along the course of this series, we'll cover how to identify and describe various pathology specimens from each organ system. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsor for today's video, Notespedia, a one-stop solution you should check out for your neat PG preparation. With comprehensive notes, tests, progress marking and much more, their app is now live on Play Store, so go check it out. More about them later in this video. This video will be about the gastrointestinal system, but before we dive into it, let me tell you the general format that you would use to describe any specimen from any organ system. Now, before you actually get to describing your specimen, make sure you take a good look at it from every direction. Then you de begin describing it by saying, this is a wet mounted specimen of the organ that it is, measuring X by Y by Z centimeters, showing two surfaces, that is the external surface and the cut surface. Now, if it's a slice of the heart, you can say the pericardial surface and the endocardial surface. If it is a specimen of the lung, you can say the pleural surface and the cut surface. You get the idea. Then you go on to describing the external surface, its color, its if there are any abnormalities, etc. You then move on to describing the cut surface. If there are any lesions, you will describe those, including its dimensions, its location, its color, its appearance, and its shape. Finally, you end by giving your diagnosis, saying that this is a specimen of so and so. Now that you've got the basic formula, let's fill in the blanks with the specifics from the GI system. So let's begin with our first specimen, which is there on your screen. This is a wet mounted specimen of the stomach measuring 20 centimeters by 18 centimeters by 1 centimeter showing the external surface and a mucosal surface. The external surface is unremarkable while the mucosa of the stomach is thinned out with a single round oval ulcer 1 centimeter in diameter with the perforation at the lower part of the body of the stomach. The surrounding stomach mucosa is hypertrophic. My diagnosis is, this is a specimen of the peptic ulcer with perforation. By now, I'm sure you've got a hang of the format. So I will describe just the basic gross pathology of the specimens from here on. Feel free to go back and rewatch the format if you find yourself forgetting it. Our next specimen, as you can see on the screen, is a specimen of a part of the stomach measuring 7 by 6 centimeters showing an external and an internal surface. The external surface is congested. The cut surface shows an ulcer measuring 3 by 3 centimeters with everted irregular margins. Surrounding stomach mucosa shows prominent mucosal folds. The diagnosis, this is a specimen of a malignant gastric ulcer. This is a specimen of the stomach measuring 18 centimeters in length. The external surface is congested. The cut surface shows an ulceroproliferative growth of 3 by 3 centimeters. The growth is cauliflower-like at the lower end of the stomach. Diagnosis. This is an ulceroproliferative carcinoma of the stomach. Our next specimen is a specimen of the stomach measuring 25 centimeters in length. The external surface is unremarkable. The internal surface shows a lumen dilated with loss of mucosal rugosity. The wall is thickened and white due to infiltrative growth creating a leather bottle like appearance. Diagnosis This is a specimen of Linitis plastica. Next, we have the specimen of a small intestine measuring 20 centimeters in length. The external surface is congested, hemorrhagic, and blackish in color. The internal surface is hemorrhagic, edematous, and blackish. The entire thickness of small intestine is congested. There is no evidence of perforation. No normal part of intestine is seen. The diagnosis here is specimen of the gangrene of the small intestine. Next, we have a specimen of the ileum measuring about 30 centimeters in length. The wall is markedly thinned out. The external surface is unremarkable 
with no evidence of tubercles, hemorrhage or perforation. The cut surface shows oval ulcers parallel to the longitudinal axis, the largest measuring 1.5 by 0.5 centimeters. The floor shows necrotic material and the edges of the ulcer are raised. Diagnosis This is a specimen of typhoid ulcers in the intestine. Searching for a one-stop solution for your MBBS and NEAT PG preparations? Welcome to Notespedia. In the library, you can find a wide category of peer-reviewed and error-free notes. Download the app now. Notespedia. More than just notes. Our next specimen is a specimen of the small intestine measuring 15 centimeters in length. The external surface is congested and no tubercles are seen. The cut surface shows two transverse ulcers at upper and lower ends measuring 3 by 3 centimeters, each covered with necrotic material. Underlying fibrosis and scarring has led to stricture formation seen in the center of the specimen. The ulcers are perpendicular to the long axis of the intestine. Diagnosis This is tuberculous enteritis along with stricture formation, that is tuberculous of the intestine. Next, we have a specimen of the intestine measuring 30 cm in length. The serosa is congested and nodular. The mucosa shows broad ulcer measuring 5 by 4 cm at the upper end and is hemorrhagic in appearance. Our diagnosis is that it is a specimen of bacillary colitis. Next, you have a specimen of the appendix measuring 5 cm in length and dilated at the tip. The external surface shows an edematous serosa, while the cut surface shows a lumen which appears obliterated. Diagnosis This is a specimen of acute appendicitis. Our next specimen is a segment of the large intestine measuring 20 cm in length and 5 cm in diameter with an attached appendix. The external surface is unremarkable while the internal surface shows a mucosa showing multiple ulcers arranged in a linear fashion with hemorrhage and multiple small slender mucosal projections or pseudopolyps. Diagnosis This is a specimen of ulcerative colitis with pseudopolyps. This is a specimen of the segment of colon measuring 6.5 by 4 cm. The external surface is unremarkable the internal surface shows a mucosa showing multiple pedunculated grayish-white cauliflower-like growths of variable sizes. Also, a few small sessile polyps are seen. Diagnosis This is a specimen of polyposis of colon. Here on the screen, you now have a specimen of the intestine measuring 15 cm in length. The serosa or the external surface is unremarkable. And the internal surface of mucosa shows sessile polyp of 2 by 2 cm with a cauliflower-like appearance. Diagnosis This is an adenomatous polyp. Next, we have a specimen of a segment of the anal canal along with the lower part of the rectum, measuring 20 cm in length. The external surface shows areas of hemorrhage. Mucosal surface shows a diffuse infiltrating growth measuring about 6 by 2 cm arising from the anal region and extending up to the rectum, encircling the lumen. The growth is white, homogeneous with a few areas of hemorrhage and no lymph nodes are seen. Diagnosis This is a specimen of carcinoma of the anal canal. Here we have a specimen of the segment of the colon with the appendix measuring about 8 cm in length and 4.5 cm in diameter. The external surface shows a congested serosa. Internal surface shows a thickened wall of 1.5 cm, a grayish-white fungating growth with necrotic areas measuring 4 by 3 cm is seen. Diagnosis This is a fungating carcinoma of the colon. Lastly, we have a specimen of the segment of the colon, measuring 8 cm in length. The external surface shows a congested serosa. The mucosal surface shows a fungating cauliflower-like growth, 
measuring 3 by 3 centimeters, grayish white in color. This is a specimen of carcinoma of colon. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope this helps you answer more confidently in your viva. Stay tuned for more videos in this series and see you in the next one.